Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking the time to view my presentation today. My name is Andrew Spowich, and I am an academic in the School of Engineering and Material Science at Queen Mary University of London. The title of my talk is Transitioning a Design-Heavy Team-Based Learning Module to Online Delivery in a Time of Crisis. The talk will cover my experiences in transitioning a module to online delivery during COVID. As I teach in our operation in China, this happened a semester earlier than most colleagues in other countries, including those based in Queen Mary in London. As you can imagine, our transition to online teaching happened very quickly. Our team had flights booked to deliver our modules throughout the semester. But as we all know now, travel restrictions prevented any of us, including our students, from going back to campus. With only a week or so's notice, our team had to transition to fully online delivery in January of 2020. The outline of my talk is pretty simple. In the first section, I will paint a picture of the situation at the time. I think this is important. As with hindsight, it seems like we have been teaching online for quite a while now. However, this new normal was certainly not in place in January of 2020. In the second section, I will cover a few details about our school in China which we call Queen Mary Engineering School, or QMES. And I will also talk a little bit about my module. I will cover the approach I used to develop the online teaching methodology that I use today. I will talk about delivery. In particular, what I did in terms of online teaching and of course, a little bit of an introduction about team-based learning, in case some of you are not familiar with the teaching approach. Finally, I will summarize the key outputs from the work. On the 31st of December, 2019, China alerted the World Health Organization to a new illness. Later, this was termed COVID-19. In the weeks that followed, Chinese universities delayed the start of the second semester and travel restrictions prevented staff from London traveling to China and also our students from returning to campus after the Lunar New Year celebrations. With around a week's notice, the school prepared for remote delivery. At this point, it was not clear how long these restrictions would last. However, it did soon become apparent that we would be delivering remotely for the entire semester. And at the time of recording this presentation, we still have not managed to get back to teaching face-to-face -face at our China operation. In more normal times, Queen Mary University of London Engineering School, or QMES, flies staff in from London to Xi'an, China, and we block teach. That is, we typically spend two or more weeks in China teaching our respective modules intensively. I teach using team-based learning, which maps well to the school's philosophy of student-centered, active learning and flipped classroom-based delivery. This paper focuses on the way modules were transitioned from the initial delivery in the first few weeks of the semester, block one was weeks one to three, to delivering a fully team-based learning online experience to our students in the second teaching block of the semester. The first teaching block contents were delivered using a mixture of technologies and in an online learning mode with periodic breaks uh, in content delivery to allow students to carry out exercises. That is to say, it was a live lecture delivered online with breaks in the content to allow for questions 
and also allow students to practice and test their own knowledge. So a very much a traditional approach. The delivery had elements of active learning and student-centered approach, but the philosophers were o philosophies were only partially implemented and there were no elements of flipped classroom-based delivery. The approach adopted in this work was to investigate how to improve the transition to online delivery and how to enhance teaching practice over the long term so that any lessons that are learned through this activity could also be used when we return to online teach uh, to face to face teaching in the future. The research question that we used in this work was what is required to transition from a face to face team based learning module delivery to online delivery within a short space of time. A little bit about our school and our module. The module I lead is double taught to two cohorts of 120 students each, so 240 students. The module is a year long and is the only subject specific module taught to students in their first year. I should mention that students in QMES study a four year BSE degree which in the first year it supports students developing English, their knowledge of physical sciences and personal development activities. Half the module is taught by colleague, sorry, half of our modules are taught by colleagues from a partner institution in China and the other half are taught by London based team that fly in to CM. The normal mode of teaching is of course face to face and all modules are delivered in English. The approach I used in this work. The work is split into two parts. The first is design and the second one is evaluation. I will only touch on the design part in this presentation. Full details of both the design elements and the evaluation components can be found in the accompanying written paper. The methodology used in the design section is summarised in the left hand slide, side of this slide. The work leverages on a range of resources shown on the right hand side of the slide. The extensive literature allowed a review of best practices, strategies and other quality metrics required for successful delivery of online teaching and more specifically online team based learning delivery. This work merges the key points from these sources into a set of structured tables. These tables are designed and built around the various components of team-based learning. That is pre-work, readiness assurance tests, application activities and peer learning peer review. An extensive set of tables were developed in the analysis covering all aspects relevant to team-based learning delivery in an online environment. This allowed any gaps to be identified between the delivery approach used in the first teaching block and a fully online, complete team-based learning delivery. Once the gaps were defined and identified, actions were also developed to allow for them to be closed and a fully based team fully team based learning implementation in the second teaching block to be delivered. Tables were created listing each best practice element. Gaps between blocks based on the status of our first teaching block and that we wanted to achieve in the second teaching block. Once this was done, the actions needed to close these gaps were developed and implemented in the second teaching block. This was done for each stage of team-based learning 
And the stages I'll show you this slide. Orientation, pre-work, readiness assurance process, application activities, and peer learning. This slide shows an example of the first entry in the first table creator. These tables are at the heart of the work done. They were developed from a wide range of sources and required considerable analysis and review to identify gaps and how to close those gaps. The approach, however, allowed all essential elements of the process to be understood and what was needed to be documented and subsequently implemented. Uh, for a full team-based learning delivery. The delivery. Before I outline the work that we did and the, the key gaps that we identified, it's important for us to talk a little bit about team-based learning, as some of you may not be familiar with the approach. Team-based learning is a structured approach academics can use to support the learning process of our students. It is nothing more than an alternative way of delivering the module's learning outcomes. Team-based learning combines the key aspects of student-centered learning, active learning and flipped classrooms within its own unique structure. The fact that it is more structured than many other flipped classroom based approaches makes it particularly suitable for students who are not used to student centered methodologies. The approach builds accountability and requires students to come to class prepared. Team based learning has been under development since the early 1970s and it was first published in its full form in 2003. Ever since, it has continued to grow in popularity with universities and staff uh, students alike. It is particularly pop popular in practice-based disciplines, such as medicine, engineering and design, where students need to be rigorously tested on the, their understanding of key concepts and be given the opportunity to apply them in real situations. Team-based learning works well for large classes and there are tools to support online delivery, although it is more commonly delivered face-to-face -face, uh, than on online platforms. What I personally like about team-based learning is it transforms my practice from content delivery, freeing me up to act as a facilitator in the learning process. It gives me real-time information on student performance so that I can identify problem areas and I have the flexibility to address them in both small and large group settings. This is really the main slide in my presentation, so I'll spend a little bit more time talking around it. The slide outlines the structure or flow of work in a typical team-based learning topic. At its core, it moves delivery of content to before the class in the pre-work section. During contact time, students are tested and, and are able to seek clarification and build understanding by applying what they have learned with a strong element of peer, peer learning. Prior to the live sessions, the academic team sets pre-work for the students to complete or review. This could be anything from references to textbooks or papers, course notes, slides, exercises, videos, web links, etc. Or a combination of the all. The online version of my module, I developed an e-book for the course and, a and I recorded a set of online lectures the students and of course the students were required to complete these before the start of the, summer, uh, of the session. The next set of activities happen in class. When delivering in a normal face-to-face -face mode rather than 
the uh, brave new online world we found ourselves in today. I deliver them synchronously. However, other online deliveries might be asynchronous. So in both face-to-face and online delivery, I do synchronous live sessions. Uh, Most live face-to-face team-based learning practitioners use live synchronous uh, deliveries for these uh, sessions. However, some online practitioners do use asynchronous approaches. What this means is the first thing students do when they enter my class, be it virtual or face-to-face, is a test. They carry out an individual quiz. This is typically 10 to 15 multiple choice questions. Students take the test under exam-like conditions. That is, they are not allowed to look at any notes or confer. In the class, this is easy to administer, of course, but online it requires a range of other techniques. The approach I used was to make my quizzes much more fast-paced so that students do not have time to look up answers or confer or talk about answers. And of course, the answers, the questions are delivered in a random order uh, with random uh, ordering of the answers as well as ordering of the questions. There are many ways of collecting data from readiness assurance tests, both the individual quiz and the team quiz that follows. I use a digital tool called an audience response system. In face-to-face teaching, I use a similar tool. In fact, a tool from the same manufacturer, uh, but we have physical devices where students can enter their answers. In the online version, I arranged for use of their online platform so students can submit their answers using their computers or mobile phones. The system allows me to use the same questions and software for both delivery approaches, i.e. online or face-to-face. This is a real advantage in uncertain times. Firstly, it allowed me to use the questions that I used in face-to-face without having to rewrite them, saving me considerable time. But it will also allow me to transition back to -to face-to-face teaching without any uh, additional uh, work uh, or preparation uh, because our students already all have uh, the uh, mechanical version of the clickers. The other advantage is I can see the results in real time, which allows me to adapt my delivery. For example, I I normally do not uh, provide any feedback in the individual quiz. But in the team quiz, students do the same set of questions. And if students are getting, uh, groups of students are getting a question wrong, I can then deliver a mini lecture to help uh, clarify any issues and elaborate on any points that are not clear. I can look at the data at the end of the class, of course, and determine if any individual student has not been preparing adequately. Uh, for their, for their uh, pre-work. And if they haven't, I can ask them why. I generally do not need to do this more than once or twice a semester in face-to-face teaching. And the similar was true in online teaching because it is self-correcting. Once they do the individual quiz, being underprepared for it is one thing, but they have to contribute to their team in the team-based quiz. So being uh, underprepared tends to... Uh, correct itself in most students. It also means using the uh, audience response systems, I don't have to do any marking at the end of the class, which with 240 students is a real bonus. The individual quiz can be formative or summative, depending on individual module preferences. I prefer to add a small amount of marks each live session to give grade motivated students more incentive to complete the pre-work and do well in both the individual and team quizzes. After the individual quiz, students carry out this team-based quiz. The questions are the same. And indeed, all activities from this point forward are team-based. 
They sit the same multiple choice questions again under similar exam conditions. But this time they have the advantage of being able to discuss their work within their team and giving a lot of opportunity for peer learning. These discussions tend to be very lively face to face and in the online iteration where students broke up into breakout rooms using the online, uh, our online delivery platform. The, question, the, the discussions in the team were also very lively. Uh, and and the, I was able to drop in and view these as and when it was needed. In face-to-face, -face, you circulate, of course, physically. In uh, online delivery, you can drop into various breakout rooms and see how students are getting on, or you can be invited by students to join the group discussion if they're not clear about any of the points. Typically, the results from a team-based quiz will be significantly better than even the highest score from the individual quiz. So in my experience, the individual quizzes, let's say a typical average would be around 60%. And in the team-based quizzes, it would be above 80%. So a dramatic improvement in students' marks. And of course, the students get to see both sets of marks uh, with immediate feedback so they can see how much better they're doing uh, by leveraging on the peer learning. It helps clarify any doubts, misunderstandings or confusion. The fact that students can see just how much better they do in the team exercises and how much more they learn is a great motivator for students. Access to the scores also allows me to address any problem areas and allow discussion of these in the mini lectures during large group classes. This allows me to focus my time addressing the real issues students have in detail rather than trying to cover all of the content that we need. Similarly, if every team gets a question correct, there is little point in spending any more time on that area and we can move on to something else. Using the audience response system, I can also display the scores of the top five individuals on the top five teams. This allows an element of gamification or friendly composition within the class. The next stage focuses on higher level, pro higher level problems. Application activities, are, they are called in the TBAL vernacular. There are typically a few questions and they require much deeper grasp of the subject. They can be carried out in class if there is sufficient time, or they can be carried out asynchronously if the results uh, and the results discussed in the next class or are part of a tutorial. These application activities are again carried out in groups and can be formative or summative. If you want to minimize the marking burden, they can also be multiple choice questions. I delivered them synchronously online and, uh, and reduced the number of application activities so that we could discuss them as an entire class at the end of the exercise. If some of the activities were not completed, students were given the opportunity to complete them asynchronously and any questions or clarifications needed could be posted on the module form. In general, I try to limit the amount of work students need to do after class and allow them to focus their work at the beginning of the class. Anything after class is optional rather than uh, counting for, towards their module marks. One of the reasons I first started to get involved in team-based learning was that I was often disappointed with the level of preparation of my students. With team-based learning, the responsibility for learning is clearly on the students. They can see their performance in every class and get immediate feedback. This, combined with a peer assessment process, encourages students to come to class prepared. And the same was true with full online team-based learning delivery. Students needed to come to class prepared. There has been a lot of research which indicates that student performance increases, as does participation, when TBL is used. And I see that in my class. There are also reports that team-based learning approach can improve student retention and satisfaction. 
and progression. As I added an element of uh, component of marking to my uh, in-class exercises, students were required to be responsive. They were required to answer questions. They were required to submit their answers uh, during the questions, both as individuals in the individual readiness assurance test and in teams during the team readiness assurance test and the application activities. Students were also given uh, bonus marks for presenting their answers and discussing and asking questions to stimulate engagement in the online forum. One of the things I like most about TBL is that I don't spend my time merely covering content. Rather, I spend my time interacting with students and addressing the issues they have. In addition, the real-time feedback of performance and responses gives me more flexibility about what I choose to focus time on. I believe this adds considerably more value rather than just attempting to cover everything in a modern day, highly uh, packed syllabuses that we all have. Team-based learning is suitable for online delivery as well as face-to-face -face delivery, but it does require a number of changes uh, to the material and tweaks to the delivery process and the tools that are used. From my perspective, this is a major advantage, as it means if I prepare my class for online delivery, moving to face-to-face -face delivery will be relatively easy. It also gave me a considerable advantage in transitioning from face-to-face -face delivery to online delivery at the start of our semester, uh, at the start of this year, making it much quicker for me to transition. Team-based learning works well with large class. In fact, it works better with larger classes than smaller classes. The final advantage I put on this slide uh, is that once team-based learning is set up, it requires less faculty time. You can teach it as an individual or as a team of facilitators. With a little training, teaching assistants can act as facilitators, which really supports discussion in larger classes. And we don't tell students the answers, of course. Uh, and, and we rather, we direct them uh, to consider the right areas. And in the online teaching, I was fortunate enough to have uh, a, a classroom assistant who could help me move between groups and uh, uh, deal with any issues the students were having. Roundup. The approach adopted allowed me to implement a full team-based learning delivery. And it was done in a very short time frame between, between the first and second teaching blocks of our first semester. It allowed integration of best practice team-based learning within an online environment and allowed the delivery to be completely online. The work allowed identification of all elements needed to deliver team-based learning online, and these can be found in the written paper uh, which accompanies this presentation. We developed a recipe on how to transition a course to an online delivery, uh, and also we were able to provide a summer school for the staff in London, in our school in London, who had not yet experienced uh, online teaching. So we were able Myself and colleagues uh, who teach in China were able to give our London-based colleagues a, uh, a quick introduction over the course of the summer about how they might consider adapting their transition to online teaching in the uh, first semester of this academic year. These are some of the key references used in the work. There are, of course, many more in the full written paper. This is the reference for this presentation and the accompanying uh, paper. I would like to thank the organisers for giving me the opportunity to present today and for you to uh, listen to my presentation. I would welcome any questions. I would be happy to support anybody uh, to learn more about team-based learning. And I would also be happy to support anyone who is looking to transition to online delivery. My email address is shown in this slide. Thank you very much, and I wish you every success in the future.